What gives a place an identity? Cape Kiwi fascinates me because of its fusion of history and geography. On the west coast of Cape York, it's at the pointy end of Australia. Here at latitude 1359 south, there's nothing to distinguish it from any other part of the low sandy coast stretching north and south. But this is where Europeans first encountered Australia, its land and its people in March 1606. William Jansoon and his crew on the Dovekin, or Little Dove, were merchant seamen employed by what was then the single largest company in the world, the Dutch East India Company, or VOC. For these mariners, map making was political and about accessing riches. They rowed up the Batavia River seeking gold and spices, but they found nothing. The Titajinga, the Yugapathi and the Wick people all observed the Little Dove's passage and they wanted to know why it had come. A conflict ensued and one of the Dovekin's crew was killed and an unknown number of Wick people died. William Jansoon and his crew turned the Dovekin around and headed back to Batavia, now modern day Jakarta. Kiwi is Dutch for turnaround. The Dovekin's crew had charted 300 kilometres of coastline. An edge-defining fragment of the unknown Southland had been translated from the fog of the imagination onto the public record. But for me, what's forgotten about Cape Kiriwe is just as fascinating. Fast forward 300 years to 1910, when Kitty and Pluto, a young Aboriginal couple, are prospecting on the Batavia, now the Wenlock River, when they find gold. It set off one of the richest gold strikes on Cape York. Kitty went on to make two more lucky strikes, and the town of Wenlock was established in the rush that followed her. For me, Cape Kiwi is about memory and identity. It is at the pointy end where place, country and culture collide.